it's the first experience you've ever had with paying, paying a premium. Uh, and you haven't really learned what it means to set that aside on a monthly basis to be able to keep your coverage, you're very likely on your way to losing that coverage and then putting yourself at risk for an untreated illness where you're out of work. So what we're trying to do is make it just more clear that above 100% of poverty on the marketplace exchange where people have access to subsidized coverage, you are required to pay a premium. So it makes sense to really help folks learn what it means on a monthly basis to set aside that income because that's how it's working in the private sector. And if folks are going to move up and out, we want under kind of the additional safety of the Medicaid program to help start uh, ingraining that sense of personal responsibility so then as the person moves up and off, they're already used to the premium payment. And by the way, it's exactly the same as it's going to be on the exchange. Um, it saves a very small amount of money. This has nothing to do with generating savings to pay for the program. We have a lot of other aggressive cost containment efforts that bring total spending in the program to below 3% growth. Uh, it is not balancing the budget on these premiums then. Yeah, don't, don't think we have like secret plans here to raise all the money to pay five percent. This doesn't add up to to hardly anything. But Anne, again, these kinds of things which other states are doing allows us, I think, frankly, to be more successful in the legislature. And I happen to support it myself. You know, give a little bit to help yourself if you're above one hundred percent poverty. I mean, it's the right thing to do. Um, in terms of uh, you know the five percent, we can accommodate the five percent because you know the traditional Medicaid program is I think I mentioned earlier sixty two thirty eight. This is ninety five five in the second year of the biennium. We also have a Medicaid reserve fund of about three hundred twenty five million just to make sure that the ups and downs of Medicaid estimates can be accommodated. So we are entirely comfortable about the fiscal strength of the state, our ability to meet the requirements. For this program, now we end up in an economic, you know, severe economic downturn. You know, we're all having trouble. We could have 1.9 billion in the rainy day fund. What does it last, Tim? 1.9, 18 days. That's about right. Yeah. yeah. So now maybe you can manage by taking care of some of your critical needs, but this 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 has nothing to do with some way to pay for anything. It's it's what I said. Was Jim? Governor, how do you get? A